Hey guys, and welcome back to another Conan Exiles video. Today we are finally on the Isle of Siptar, south of the Wreck of the Cleaver, building a flotsam home. After spending most of the day yesterday downloading and installing Siptar, twice, and then reinstalling the game itself, I finally got onto the new map, and although I had to wait a long time, I am fairly impressed with it, it's definitely carefully crafted and has a great atmosphere. As usual, this video is indeed sponsored by NordVPN. You can get 68% off a two-year deal when you visit nordvpn.org slash eradyt or use code eradyt at checkout. Stick around till the end of the video to learn more about how to unlock the full potential of the internet with NordVPN. So without further ado, let's get started. Firstly, we'll be starting off with of course the base plate. I used flotsam fence foundations to lay out the basic shape of the build. I'm aiming for quite a long structure that is slightly reminiscent of a ship, as flotsam is, of course, salvage from wrecked ships. I'll be trying to utilise balconies and awnings heavily in this build, along with using this picturesque area between the two waterfalls to guide the build, as I'll later be building bridges to access the build from either side of the waterfall stream. When I finish the base plate, I then place flotsam ceilings to cover the fence foundations. Next for the walls. I used flotsam walls and frames to build the walls of the ground floor two tiles high, constructing some rooms on the ground floor as I went. Flotsam is a very rough, coarse, and cobbled together material that I'm still a bit torn on. Flotsam can get very samey very quickly, so breaking it up with awnings or other decorations is almost essential, as otherwise you end up with an extraordinarily boring build. I'm also not a huge fan of the frames, I get what they were going for, but I don't think it's the best design. Alas though, it's not awful, and I think Flotsam is a material set that will eventually grow on me. I already do have a soft spot for the roof pieces, I think they look great. For the first floor, I again covered part of the walls with flotsam ceilings, then building walls up again one tile high, as I'll be aiming for a first floor that feels a lot more compact, and utilises the cloth roof pieces as something of a feature piece for the room. Next for the roofs, I firstly built a flat apex roof atop the first floor, finishing the roof off with rooftop pieces and wall caps. I have to say I really do like the wall cap design from this material pack. I then built awnings around the balconies and porches, extending the side porches around the build and adding fences, then finally building another flat apex roof atop the front of the ground floor, finishing it off again with wall caps and rooftop pieces.
finally I built bridges on either side of the build across the waterfall streams, using bridges from the debutcheries of Decato DLC. Finally, when the shell of the build was done, it was then time to of course furnish. Approaching the build, I've lit the outside with lanterns and used terranium braziers inside. Entering the build, Flotsam creates quite a warm and rustic interior that works really nicely with warmer lighting options. On the ground floor we have a few basic working areas, including a blacksmith's workshop, some crafting stations in the corridor, and a kitchen adjacent to the lounge. I do like this building pack a lot, I just wish they had included decoration and lighting options native to the pack, rather than having to rely on decorations from other packs that sometimes don't suit the aesthetic. I especially would have liked to see some ship related decorations, maybe like some wheels or some mastheads to go on the walls. The balcony at the front of the ground floor provides a nice view down the waterfall, to the wreck of the cleaver and then across to the open sea. Heading upstairs we reach the bedroom. This is a much more compact room, with a small desk space for the resident to study his findings on Siptar and work out what is happening at the centre of the island. Again, the first floor has another balcony. This one is much wider than the ground floor and provides more impressive views across the Isle of Sipta.
And there we have it, a flotsam home on the Isle of Sipta, south of the wreck of the Cleaver. Thanks for watching, I think I need to give Flotsam some time to grow on me, but I'm sure it eventually will. On Sunday we will be back on Sipta trying out the Storm Glass material, and from the very small amount I've already played with it, that material pack is insanely good. As I mentioned earlier, this video is indeed sponsored by NordVPN. If you want to stay safe on the internet and ensure you can't be tracked by shady individuals, or whilst being able to access Netflix, BBC iPlayer, ITV, Hulu, HBO and more regardless of where you live, all whilst maintaining blazing fast internet speeds, NordVPN is the perfect choice for you. When you use my link or discount code you can get 68% off a 2 year deal, which comes out to $3.71 a month, an absolute bargain price for such a great service that I use almost every day. The software is a small download and it's easy to use one click and you're both connected and protected, and you have full access to the internet. Nord also has very strict policies on protecting your data, meaning you can browse in confidence. Visit nordvpn.org slash eradyt or use code eradyt at checkout to claim this huge discount and get the best VPN service available on the internet and also help me out a lot at the same time. As always, thanks to Nord for sponsoring the video. If you've enjoyed this video, leave a like and let me know in the comments below if you have any build suggestions for future videos. As usual, absolutely anything is welcome. Don't forget to both follow me on Twitch and join the fun on our Discord through the links in the description. Again, don't forget you can get 68% off NordVPN when you use code ERADYT at checkout or you can go through my affiliate link in the description and pinned comment below. YouTube is currently my full-time source of income, so if you enjoy the content and would like to help support the channel so I can continue to put out the best content possible, do consider becoming a patron. There are multiple tiers of support from $1 to $20, offering many different benefits from a mention in every video to Discord roles, and even sneak peeks of every new video before anyone else. The link to my Patreon is in the description, so if you'd like to support the channel feel free to consider becoming a patron. On that note a thanks to our current patrons Sammy, Sodialot, Randar, Dawnfox, MK Pantheon, Sergeant Swede, and Shannara. If you're new here, feel free to check out the rest of the content on the channel. There are new Cone Nexiles videos coming every Wednesday and Sunday, so if you like what you see, subscribe and ring the notification bell to be the first to see the next video, and to join us on the road to 10,000 subscribers. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.